Hi everyone, this is Mike Kramer of Mock Capital and we're just going to take a look at the markets today and see what we can't figure out. Um, so the last time we spoke we were focusing in on this rising wedge pattern and that indeed has played out to some degree, although we haven't gotten the complete reversal, uh, we have gotten about half of it to this point. And so that leaves us with the question of how much further can the S&P decline or we're we looking at some further upside here. Uh, and at least when you look at the immediate chart you can get a sense that um, there is a little bit uh, of an uptrend that's formed over the short term here. The last couple of days since the bottom of the rising wedge, you can see we came down and tested this level once and this level now, and that's formed our uptrend. There is, however, a very big downtrend that's been in place now since the February 2nd high. This red line was at, well, this was that 80 day timing pattern that I had pointed out back in the middle of February, which marked the turning point in the index. You can see that the 80 day cycle has uh, mark bottoms and tops pretty well. The next cycle bottom would sometime come around the, the middle of June based off of this current cycle, uh, which may suggest we may be heading lower for another couple of months. But again, the big test here is going to be determined by what happens with this uptrend and the combination of this downtrend at this point. Uh, it is worth noting there is al also another trend line that has formed off of the bottom, uh, which is uh, currently in place as well. Uh, it has served as support and resistance to this point. Um, and again, at this point, we're just looking to see how this is going to come together because, again, a break of this support level and uptrend would certainly set us up for a decline back to that 3850 level where a, a rise above the black trend line would certainly set us up to potentially test back, move back up towards around 4050. Now, what's interesting is that we've already tested this black line on a couple of occasions. Here's one, here's two, here's three. Uh, here's four times we failed each time we've gotten there. So yet to be seen whether or not we're going to get that high. Also, when we look at the um, RSI, you can see that the RSI still has a downward trend to it overall. And uh, that's important to note as well that momentum still remains fairly bearish. And you can see the blue line, of course, being the long-term downtrend that's been in place now since uh, the uh, January 5th highs. Now we go over to the NASDAQ. The picture is a little bit different and it's actually a little more clear. Um, what we're currently looking at here in the NASDAQ is what's called a 2B top. This is a reversal pattern, and this is notated by the fact that we closed on um, February 2nd at 12803. Uh, and then you can see if we zoom in a little bit here how uh, we tried on one, two occasions, tried to get above that 12803. But on each occasion, we closed below the 12803. And this is a failed breakout attempt, which would also be called a 2B top reversal pattern. And these patterns typically result in at least um, a decline back to around 11,700 to 11,800. But again, it wouldn't be surprising to see the complete reversal of this trend line. Now, what's also impressive is that this uh, top also came around what's been a key level of support and resistance for the NASDAQ now around this 12,800 level as well. Additionally, you can see the blue line off of the March 2020 lows which makes connections with this point here, this point here, this point here, this point. Uh, and then, of course, you can see that more recently it served as a little bit of support. So a break of this uh, uptrend and a break of support at 12,500 easily sets the NASDAQ up for a decline back to 12,200 or so, at least in the immediate term, and potentially back to filling this gap at 11,900. Um, but again, the key here is that the 2B top needs to continue to hold. If we were to break above and close above this 12,803, it would kill the 2B top reversal call, and it could possibly set us up for a retracement all the way back to the um, August highs of 13,000 or so. But uh, again, to this point, this top has been tested now uh, several times, and so really what we need to see is the uh, NASDAQ uh, either gap below these two support levels um, or we need to see it break pretty decisively below it. You can see the momentum remains fairly bearish in the NASDAQ overall. Uh, what's also interesting as well is if you were to measure this from this bottom to this top and then do an extension of that, comes off of comes out to a 50% extension from this bottom to this top. So you have some good Fibonacci balance there as well. Um, and, and so that's really what we're looking at from that perspective. Additionally, there are some other things going on in the NASDAQ which are a little bit concerning. This is the NASDAQ advanced uh, decline line. And you can see that there's been a very big divergence between uh, the NASDAQ 100 and the NASDAQ uh, advanced decline line overall. Uh, and you can see that typically they tend to follow each other pretty well. 
um, and there's been this very large divergence with the NASDAQ index moving up and the NASDAQ advanced decline line moving clearly lower. And this is because there's a, a little bit of a bifurcation in the market where you have some of the very large technology names, the big leaders, uh, the big mega cap names, which have been kind of become a little bit of a flight to safety because of the size of their balance sheets and their cash flows, and they're uh, certainly not in the financial sector. And so you've seen a little bit of that, and that's led to this divergence. So what this is basically telling you is that the NASDAQ is not as healthy as it looks on the surface. Additionally, here's another chart. This is the, the cumulative NASDAQ number of new highs minus new lows. And what's very clear is that the number of new lows uh, on a cumulative basis has made a new low. And typically, uh, in the past at least, when this makes new lows, typically the NASDAQ itself isn't too far behind. Uh, and this is something to keep track of and, and to watch because if we continue to see the number of new lows outpacing the number of new highs on a regular basis, you're going to continue to see this number move down, and that's going to be a negative for uh, the NASDAQ overall. So when you look at the NASDAQ and then you look at the S&P, it kind of gives you a sense that maybe the setup in the S&P is leaning a little bit more bearish. Uh, when you look at the, the Dow Jones, for example, you can see that we had um, that inverse head and shoulders pattern that we talked about briefly last time. And uh, you can see that we got up to around this 12, 000, uh, 32,600 area, which is a, a little bit of a zone of congestion. I had noted that you know if we could get above that level, we had much further to go. But to, to this point, this is where we've stopped. And you can see we came down, we came back up, tested it again, and to this point we failed, which may mean that this is ultimately going to serve as a continuation pattern, and you're going to see the Dow actually break the 31,700 level in the not-too-distant future. Of course, here's that diamond pattern we broke out of, and a complete retracement of the diamond pattern would suggest we go back to the, the lows as well. But again, the, the immediate next level after a break of 31,700 or so would, would be a retest of the 30,200 area. Um, what is also very interesting as well is that you're seeing yields really hold up quite well with the 10-year Treasury yield, um, what looks like putting in potentially uh, a double pot, a double, a triple bottom pattern. And this is important because also if you extend this trend line out, you can see that what, what has happened here and what's taken place is the 10-year has broken out, come back down to and retested that trend line, and that is actually held. It's also important to note that this is around the 200-day moving average, which is also held, relatively uh, speaking. And so this level here at 3.55% is also a critical level because if you notice, we've tested this 3.55% level now on a couple of occasions where it's been support and resistance. And each time that's been broken, it has led to actually a new high uh, on the 10-year, at least in this cycle. Uh, and if we were to break above this 3.55 region, I, I think you're looking at a pretty clear and easy path for the 10-year to get back to 390 or so. And it's not just in the 10-year you see this. You also see this in the 30-year. You can also see that there's a um, potential uh, triple bottom pattern that's formed here as well. Uh, and this is also a very critical um, thing to keep in mind because, again, here's your big level of resistance at 4%. Um, if we continue to extend this line off of here, you can see that uh, these trend lines have offered some support. And here's your 200-day moving average. So I would think that if we can get the 30-year to, to really push beyond this 380 region, you're looking at a return to around 4%. And on the two-year, that's continued to actually uh, improve and show some signs of improvement. Uh, it is taking a little bit longer than what I would have expected, but uh, not everything always goes according to plan. Um, and what we're seeing here is also the two years managed to hold on to this 200-day moving average. It looks like we're trying uh, very carefully to uh, extend out of this uh, falling flag pattern, which is actually a, 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 a reversal pattern, and that would suggest we actually rise back to around 470 or so. So again, this is something that worth, is worth monitoring. And also you're seeing on the 10-2 spread, which is also indicative of potentially a, an increase here in, in, in the two-year yield. As you can see here, that here's your downtrend, here's your gap, here's your uh, move higher, and here's, your, um, here's another trend line that comes off. So again, if you were to see the two-year actually begin to move higher again, there's an opportunity for the 10-2 to actually come all the way back down to and refill this gap around negative 90 basis points. Um, and that's sort of where we are in U.S. markets. If we take a look at Germany, the German DAX, 
uh, certainly has broken down finally. Uh, it is, again, still showing some signs of relative strength. The German DAX has really been a very strong index, uh, surprisingly so. And again, it's been tending to kind of stick with the China reopening trade. And uh, we've seen a little bit of Hong Kong, uh, sort of uh, the Hong Kong HSI rebound and, and, and kind of, uh, I would say, stabilize at this point. And so we'll, you really need to keep an eye on see what's happening here. Uh, with the Hong Kong exchange, uh, and you also need the Hang Seng, and you also need to keep an eye on the Aussie 200 index because, again, these are all sort of China plays, and you can see the Aussie 200 fell much more sharply than the DAX, but you can see that the, that the Aussie 200 is actually starting to show signs of maybe a little bit of a reversal here, and with the DAX having this gap up here to fill at around 15,600, it doesn't look all that impossible, especially if you start seeing... Uh, some strength out of the uh, the Hang Seng and the Aussie on uh, the Aussie 200, and then of course if you take a look at the FTSE, the FTSE has also been battered because again it's very heavily weighted towards financials. But again, the FTSE also holding the 200-day moving average, and this is also a key level of support around 7,300. Something to keep keep a watch of. Obviously, a break of 7,300 is no good and it's going to result in, in a revisit to much lower levels uh, while your upside resistance is somewhere around 7,700 or so. Uh, and if we take a look at some of the, the rates in Europe as well, you can see the German two years really held on to this 240 level. If we look at the German 10, uh, you can see that that's also held uh, some key support here around 198. If we look at the Euro, the Euro's actually made some uh, pretty imp good improvement here. Uh, it's managed to hold to this trend line. It's managed to hold support. The big level of test comes really here at this 109 level. If you break above the 109 and a half area, there's probably some room to run back up to around 111. While if you look at the British pound, you can see that this is clearly resistance here at around 124 with your support level at 118. Again, a break of resistance at 124 or so sets you up for an easy uh, probably climb to around 126.5 to 127, while the dollar index has really struggled. Um, but you can see there's actually a little bit of a, a channel that's formed here, um, and this could be indicative of a reversal coming. So you just need to keep an eye on the dollar index and keep an eye on those two resistance levels on the euro and on the pound, because if the dollar uh, begins to, sh if you get a hot PCE report, let's say on Friday, that could be an indication that the dollar is ready to go the other way because the market has mispriced uh, where inflation is heading. And that obviously would be a negative for the euro and potentially sending it back down to the lower end of the range at 105, while you could see the uh, British pound retrace and head back down towards 118 and a half to 119. So that's anyway, that's all I have for you. Um, hope to hope this helps uh, and have a great weekend. Bye.